guys were the. No, there are so many bros in the beer industry. I don't know what to, you're talking about. But <laughs> <laughs> well, Teresa, I really appreciate the, uh, you know, the style that you had. Yeah, it's more nerdy. Uh... Oh man, seriously, I was really, um, you know, when I called you, uh, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's been an ongoing process for seven years, getting to getting to quit. Yeah. <laughs> now that it it came to. Um, uh, like we did like one final push in 2019 where I quit my day job to yeah. try to focus on the brewery and uh, first and foremost I wasn't disciplined enough <laughs> for it ah. second of all it's uh, we couldn't move that much beer it's, uh, it wasn't financially viable no at all so either we had to uh, put more money into it get someone else to do it or uh, uh, and, and when you say you couldn't move it you couldn't sell it exactly but, uh, yeah but the brewery events and uh, festivals were probably the biggest income for us we had yeah. uh, we had this annual festival up in Söderhamn called the uh, Malt Malt okay and that was probably like 15% of our yearly income mm. on those two or three days <clears throat> yeah. yeah for me it also meant one festival and I can pay the rent you know yeah, and that's also where we went wrong. Uh, our rent was just way too high. Uh, what so, did you pay? Well, you know, it, not that much, <laughs> but for me it was still too high. You know, we, we made a business plan at the beginning. And then it was like, okay, we do it really small scale. So you know, we need to find somewhere a barn. You know, somewhere where we pay maybe uh, five thousand in rent. You know, yeah. then that that that's doable. You know, but then, yeah, we ended up uh, paying three, three times as much, you know, but we sort of fell in love with the place, you know, because it was just perfect. And it was, it was in the center of, of the town. So I, I thought, you know, when this gorge for selling uh, will come, because it must come, because they have been speaking about it for like 10 years, you know, then I'm golden, you know, I'm, I'm central. I mean, it was just on the, on the main street in yeah. town. So if this courts was selling, uh, you know, I could open up my doors, especially if I could open up the doors when she's staying blocked to close it there, you know, then I, I could, you know. Yeah, I imagine that, getting a bear on a Sunday. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> or at least on the, you know, uh, Friday night or, you know, even on a Saturday reasonable when timing. When you like it, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, we had a... Uh, we had pretty good rent as well, and um, the land, uh, it's called land landlord. Yeah, yeah. It, it was super accommodating. The rent was like five thousand five hundred something. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't bother That's... anyone because it's such a desolate place. Yeah. But then still, I mean, you guys had such a wonderful uh, labels. Who did that, by the way? Oh, big shout out to uh, Magnus uh, Dead Pigeon Jansson. <laughs> Dead pigeon. Yeah, Dead it's pigeon. Uh, it's his uh, brand name. He's, okay. uh, he's from uh, Hudiksvall. We started together like twenty years ago. Yeah. He's a tattoo artist in Japan now. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, really, really skilled. But yeah, no, but I, I really, I was so surprised because you know on the festivals you guys were always, you know, yeah, and then your stand was pretty crowded. Yeah, we usually did pretty good. I'll uh, I'll take no credit for that. Uh, I'll uh, uh, rack it up to our uh, ADHD uh, uh, connoisseur Ekian yeah. <laughs> that came up with those ideas. Uh, and also the best IPA I ever drank. Uh, I I know it was freshly uh, kegged. Oh, thank like you. The, the, the day before, but was, uh, was it the conductor? I, IPA? I have no idea. It's you know festival. I'm not very uh, you know. No, you, you, so, so, so busy. You remember the ride there and the ride home. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> exactly. I do miss those. I do miss the festivals. Now I have a sort of like a, how do you say that? Anxiety when it comes to big groups. So when there's a bar between me and them, then I really enjoy big crowds. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah, I find. I found them exhausting, but fun. Uh, I, yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of crowds either. I'm a pretty introvert person. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it really drains all the energy I got. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fun while it's happening. I think I didn't have one single rude customer. At no. Any other festivals? No. Not even not even stupidly drunk. No. But no the, the 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 atmosphere in general. Uh, 
I, I once I've I've seen uh, you know two guys uh, looking funny at each other and it was a little bit of a push and shove here, but no, everybody's just happy to be there, you know. Nice. Yeah, but no, no. I've seen a few, few people get thrown out, but they were still happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> Oh. Ah, this is one beer, man. This is one beer. Come it's on. It's 10 centiliters. How bad can it be? <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, but the uh, uh, the festival we uh, used to have was uh, that was probably the peak of the year. So we had mm -hmm. uh, uh, we sold our beer, we sold some temple, some jackdaw. Ah. We had our own chefs. We had a few bands outdoors and uh, nothing really goes on in Sudan so that was kind of the main event for everyone I think yeah yeah awesome yeah so but it was uh, as exhausted as you were after the regular festivals this this really okay. drained everything you got you needed to recuperate for like a week before you could talk to anyone <laughs> yeah when you when you started the brewery because uh, how long did you say you had the brewery uh, I think because we ended up having it for like seven seven years. Ah. And then when you started, did, how many system logs did you end up? Uh, we got five right off the bat. Okay. Nice. Then uh, was, uh, the route would be, there are six system logs in Uppsala. Mm -hmm. And uh, on our way uh, between those five, we actually drove by, uh, drove past the sixth one. <laughs> so we asked super politely for several years, can we please have this one as well? Uh -huh. Still yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah. my bro. If you ask again, we're going to take away a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tried to, to try to cover, we didn't have a particular niche, so yeah. we tried to cover most of it. Yeah. Uh, the weirdest one would probably be uh, uh, Pom Pom, where we, we uh, initially wanted to just make a lager. Yeah. But we didn't have uh, uh, any way of uh, cooling the fermentation tanks. <laughs> so we ended up with a blonde with the pom grenade instead. <laughs> so kind of like a lager. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> we did our best. <laughs> uh, we had that one. Then we had the, uh, yeah, the regular IPA, the conductor. That was probably the flagship product. Yeah. Uh, black IPA, uh, eventually a lager. And uh, the blueberry stout, which uh, was my favorite. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't. <laughs> and that, well, I like stout with fruit too. I had a. It was actually a, a smoked sour raspberry stout, but fruit with with yeah stout with fruit. I really like the combo. Yeah, so, yeah. Blueberries and raspberries they are like made for a stout, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no yeah. one crunched the numbers before we started that project. Though, oh. because <laughs> when when we finally did, I, I think we came to the conclusion that uh, each product sold was like a, a ten per, uh, ten other wins <laughs> win from it. <laughs> Blueberries are expensive. <laughs> oh, Damon, yeah. We did. Uh, 800 liter batches of it and it was uh, 70 liters of uh, blueberry puree that yeah. went into it. Ah. It was a fun time. That's uh, such an ad hoc, so many ad hoc solutions to everything. Yeah. We had cold brewed coffee in it as well. So the ah. process would be, I would drive and pick up my brother who was part of the brewery and he would have made the cold brew coffee overnight. Yeah. And he had his uh, like a regular kettle, <laughs> wrapped yeah. it in uh, aluminum foil, got it in the car and that's a coffee. <laughs> yeah. Probably not in uh, line with the health legislation at all. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. yeah. We got we got one pushback for from the health guys. I think it was the last inspection. We had uh, uh, the grinder. Yeah. And it's, uh, it was this huge grinder that we shared with uh, Jackdaw. It yeah. was standing in a fairly open space in a big ass barn, like yeah. maybe ten meters to the ceiling. Uh -huh. And it's, there's no physical way. It's a cone-shaped yeah. uh, yeah. mill, and it's, uh, you can't climb into that thing. And they started to theorize about mice, maybe like parachuting from the ceiling <laughs> down into it. <laughs> we need to construct a lid for that. <laughs> I'd love to get paid to do that kind of work. It sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, speaking about the festival, it's, um, it's a lot more fun to sell beer when oh. you can get maybe like 60, 70 kroner profit from one single cell. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Yes. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And for a few days each year, that was the case. <laughs> that's yeah. where the money comes from. I think that's my biggest, by far the biggest problem I have with uh, mm -hmm. Swedish legislation. That uh, I never owned or operated an American brewery, uh, of course, but let's say you open a brewery in the state somewhere inside Colorado. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a tap room because that's yeah. where the money comes from. Yeah. And if you got a tap room in Sweden, you need a kitchen, you need a chef. You yeah. Need, you need five starters, five mains, and five desserts. <laughs> yeah. So it, re it really kills the business before it's even started. Yeah. No, but then also when we started, we ended up in one one system block. They they just changed the rules. You got you got the one way. store. Yeah. Oh got shit. The one store exactly. That's a nice way to start, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's that's how you want to, you know, conquer the market is with with one store. And one story in Gnesta, you know, and so if you make a really cheap lager, maybe you can make a little bit of a, a sales, but yeah, with the Belgium style beer in Gnesta. So we started targeting the, you know, the, the, the people that order beer and it was, and it was working, but the, the first few years, you know, the money was just draining, uh, draining out. It was impossible. Yeah. But yeah, but we already made all the decisions to, to get started, you know, and, uh, because yeah, they just they just changed the rules. Yeah, it's a steep learning curve, and mm -hmm. you don't. <laughs> if I know, if I knew, uh, knew then what I know now, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't <laughs> have gotten into the business. No. But it's uh, everywhere you look, it's just more red tape. Yeah. Uh. Like, for instance, uh, uh, the beer I mentioned earlier, Pom Pom. When we launched that thing, okay. uh, I put uh, put up like a Facebook ad for it. And I had the system log it logo, ah. which I wish I thought, if I thought about this one more time, I probably wouldn't have put it there. But within 10 minutes, they gave me a call and they told me to take it down. Yeah. How, 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 does, how does that work? Do you have like one Facebook it's, monitoring guy at system log it? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, it wouldn't uh, surprise me. But imagine if you're starting up and you get to sell each glass of beer with a 50 kuna profit. Yeah. That that would make yes. a whole lot of difference. The, well, clearly, yeah, uh, yeah, and and not you know, like if you have your own tap room, you know, you can just tap from keg. You don't need to bother with yeah, yeah, that expensive was, labels and bottles and you know. Yeah, exactly what the, what Ong Kwan in Uppsala is doing. They yeah. they got the um, probably the only um, brew pub I've seen in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So they go straight from tank to uh, to the tap. Yeah, but I mean. Having that kind of potential profit, <laughs> like ripped out of your hands, <laughs> not very encouraging. No. <laughs> uh. And it's really also pretty much for nothing because if I have five starters at my brew pub or not, it's not going to make any difference in the real world at all. <laughs> no, no. No, one, no one's going to get less violently drunk because <laughs> of like a skog and toast. <laughs> And uh, I, I don't know, I, this whole concept, you know, so many things when you come from the Netherlands are just uh, bonkers, you know, what the, the, that I, for a long time I didn't realize that you cannot have just a bar, you know, I mean, where, where do you go if you want to have a beer, you know, you, you don't go to a restaurant, you go to a bar. Yeah, and yeah, then uh, don't you dare to dance at that <laughs> oh, bar. Oh, yes, <laughs> whoa, yeah, that too, yeah. <laughs> Ah, all, all these freaking rules, you know, it's, uh... Yeah. Uh, but, uh, maybe it's not that surprising when you think about it, because uh, System Belaget pushes so much money into their own marketing, and uh, thankfully <coughs> you can't handle an open bear market. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know, they also I think they're upholding this uh, stigma, you know, because in Sweden there still is quite a stigma, you know, that alcohol is uh, is so bad, and you should you know, as the, the government should protect the people from drinking beer, you know, with their ridiculous rules on, on labels. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, in the Netherlands, there's a beer that's called your grandma's twat and big dick. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not the kind of beer that I want to order. You know, it's kind of cheap. But you know, if you want to call your, you know, I can imagine you standing at the bar. Oh, oh, oh give me your grandma's twat. You know. <laughs> But, um, yes. but I, I got some labels uh, disapproved. So one had a, 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 how you say that? Swastika. 
No, no, it, it has a, had a syringe on it, yeah. but it was a, it standard for a genetically modified. It had a DNA string in it, ah. and then a syringe in the DNA string. And yeah, the syringe, I mean, drugs, come on, Shit. heroin. What was I promoting heroin in my beer, you know? So yeah, I had to take it out, and I, I punched all the all the syringes out. Right? Uh, yeah. uh, That's a... my, my favorite label story is probably Knivsta, the train, uh, the train station brewery. Have you heard that one? Is that with a uh, with a rowing boat? Uh, no, that's uh, that's uh, Nielsen, that's my, I that's, think. That's my favorite. Oh, uh, this <laughs> this one is equally good. <laughs> well, tell. They had um, uh, they brew from an uh, old uh, train station, and on I think they started off making just Folkjöl, and then they moved to uh, Stakjöl versions of their beers. Yeah, and they had this pretty like neat and tidy label, like a copper background, a stylized uh, locomotive. Yeah, and uh, it was like. Maybe a, a few pixels high. It's not a big locomotive, okay. and also it's just black. Oh. Uh, driving the locomotive, there's a man, and you you cannot propel vehicles <laughs> on, on a bare label. So they had everything labeled, and uh, they just have to recall everything and just put like yeah. those uh, tiny stickers on top of Holy the man. Shit, man. And now there's a horse there instead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, who are they really protecting people, you know, by doing that? Do they really think, wow, we did something good here, you know? We, we protected the, the people from uh, driving trains while being drunk. You yeah, know? You, you'll be surprised to know that that's the most common cause of death in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah I, did, I didn't know that, but I'm learning uh, something new every day, man. It's, no, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a... If you don't laugh at it, it becomes really depressing real fast because it is. It's, it is just so stupid. Yeah, it's a, it's a waste of money. You know, it, it's it's just, and then you know, uh, then you have this uh, famous American beer that you can buy. It has a car and a canoe on it. Yeah, but they're American. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so but, do, but why why is that? You know. In all fairness, well, they did censor founders' breakfasts out yeah. because it's uh, it's got a kid eating porridge on it. Can't have that. <laughs> Yeah, no, not promoting beer to uh, infants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they love that stuff. Oh, I like the label where it was like an 1800, uh, you know, uh, painting where people are, were picnicking, you know, in these beautiful dresses and uh, and top hats, and there there was a couple in a canoe. And oh they, yeah, that. <laughs> they were not wearing life vests, you know, and yeah. Yeah, first of all, being in a canoe and beer, yeah, no, that, yeah. that. But then on top of that, no life vest. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's how that's how Estonia got started. Uh, that's, that's a, uh, what because, a, Estonia, the ferry disaster. That's because of oh. that beer label. Little uh, known fact. <laughs> learning something new every day. <laughs> uh, so. uh, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. It's uh, so much effort for absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, I always found the uh, Ika guys very supportive and enthusiastic, actually. Yeah, and it's also not a three-month uh, process. No. Because no. That, I think for me that was the most frustrating, you know, because I made the beer with a uh, fresh hand-picked uh, picked flatter. So I, I had to wait, you know, and you don't know exactly when you're going to pick it. But then you have this process where you, you know, at System Blaget, you can once a month make a quotation so then i you know i have to sort of plan like oh i might have the beer just ready by then you know you make the quotation and then yeah of course you know when it starts to rain and uh, you know for a week then suddenly yeah you don't you know you didn't make the the deadline so you have to wait another month so then i already have beer that's a month old then i have to go into the three months period where you know they just yeah. do you know go through the label with their magnifying glass you know to see if there's now a little guy standing on the locomotive somewhere you know and then they want to have like a three months best buy which of course i understand but it means that now technically <coughs> they have taken seven months of my uh, sales window yep yep you it's, know? yeah and it's such a volatile process because it can get recalled at any any point the, like the, uh, what's it called, uh, from Nina Salmon, they also had a, had a rowboat, and the rowboat was fine for 10 years, oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden it wasn't, and now I'm not sure what the robot status is. Uh -uh. 
Well, if if they had already approved it, then you know. Yeah. A, yeah, everything was uh, fine and dandy for ten years. Yeah, <laughs> well, then they cannot recall it, you know, because that that uh, robots have stayed the same uh, over the ten years. You know, so. uh, and one time I got a call because we had a black IPA, black like my soul, and it was a guy and he was holding up a teddy bear, you know, and well. What's wrong with it? Nothing is wrong with it. You know, if if you take your regulations and you know, but but it it felt wrong to them, you know. Yeah. So so they they were just going to fish, you know, and said they want to have an explanation of what it meant. Ugh. And to be very honest, I didn't <laughs> give it much thought, you know. Yeah. Like like myself, it it looks like you know, pretty pretty dark. So it, it, I didn't meant anything really by it, you know. I mean. I was pooping out labels, uh, you know. Yeah, it sounds like a like an edgy '90s uh, cover yeah. artwork for a Korn album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but yeah. So then I really, I was like, ah, oh, shit. Then now, now I have to be really careful with what I'm saying, you know. So I said, well, he's rejecting his innocence, something like that, you know. I've, well, there was that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very artsy. I guess. <laughs> So phew. I wonder what to do with the information that. once they get it. It's like one label yeah. person taking the decisions, probably. But uh, it's, what's the process like? Because it is yeah. the uh, the absolute the nature of their work is ridiculous. Oh. Who do they report the ridiculousness to? Where does it go? I don't know. I, I, I think it's for them uh, that they can justify uh, being, uh, you know, having the monopoly on selling beer. By saying we make sure that all the beers is up to a certain standard, all the labels are are you know, and yearly we you know disapprove of thirty percent of of the labels. Oh yeah. You know, and if not, all those nasty labels would have gone on the market. Can you imagine? You know, so good thing that that you know we have the monopoly on selling beers, and you know we can protect the people against you know little guys on on on. In rowboats without fast or you know, yeah, driving yeah. locomotives. Those are important it. issues. It, they are, of course. And, and it's, uh, at some point, well, several grown-ups will have to sit in a meeting room yeah. and and discuss these topics. Yeah. And a lot with, to be, with a straight face, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it could easily turn into a Monty Python sketch. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the next step would be to work at System Blogger to get an inside view of it. Mm. Infiltrate. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah. But it's a, it kind of looks like a depressing place. You remember yeah. the uh, the place in Stockholm where we had in the samples before uh, you launch a product? Ah, uh, yeah. It's it's the I've never been to Russia, but I imagine that's it's, what Russia looks like. Yeah. It, yeah. What else can we talk smack oh. about? We got well, but but <laughs> how how do you think it, it would be profitable? Because actually, you didn't have so much rent. No. Uh, Did you pay off the bank? Was uh, your equipment paid for? Everything was paid for. We did. It was like a DIY kind of setup. So we had. Well, at some point, I remember I came by because you had like big oh, yeah. tanks with yeah, pulling. The a... Yeah, the fermentation tanks were funded by uh, Almi. Uh, okay. Photographer yeah. from them. Yeah. And uh, that's probably the only. Uh, government affiliated mm. part that I can get behind. Ah. It's, uh, it's uh, without yeah, much security, it's... you can fund the startups. <laughs> yeah. and that's nice. And it, that, it wasn't that much. I think we paid like 3,000 a month for uh, ah, okay. the down payment. Uh, and everything else was uh, like we had whole milk tanks, so, yeah. uh, Italian yeah. pumps, you know, the, the cheap, uh, cheap ones that make a lot of noise. Yeah. Uh, no. But the money went to um, probably had the same yeah. yeah the money went yeah. to uh, taxes and uh, hops mostly. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have a, we didn't buy from contract because we never knew no. uh, when we were supposed to brew. But it depended on demand. It, uh, it was high demand in summer, and uh, we actually just got our stuff from Humble Gordon each for each brew, and that's. <clears throat> Yeah. Fin financially not very wise. No, yeah, I had to do the same. I didn't make uh, that much volume in hops. Uh. When I tried to get uh, my Sambo into fancy beers, mm. she was kind of offended that it wasn't lager. <laughs> this is it got a raspberry, it's not a beer. <laughs> what are you doing? Is it what you do for a living? 
<laughs> uh, well, at least it was not a beer with seaweed. And that's a nice, it was a nice beer though, a wheat beer with seaweed, you know, okay. added salt. Yeah. You have to be careful because at some point it tastes like <laughs> sea water, <laughs> but that's nice. I started adding more salt in uh, all my beers. Because that actually gives a nice uh, mouth feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We had uh, added salt for the uh, uh, pomegranate beer ah, as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm gonna gonna brew a beer, like maybe in a few weekends. Mm -hmm. Some nice thick stout, perhaps. Yeah. Outdoors. I have to I have to brew a stout as well. Uh, my first uh, dry oak smoked uh, stout. Because uh, the farmer where I live is uh, a big big fan. Oh, and uh, he's constantly asking uh, when I'm going to brew that beer again. And, uh, what was the name of that one? Uh, empirical Stout. Ah, ah, nice one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because it was uh, imperialistically uh, discovered. You know, we we constantly improved on our recipe and what happens if we um, do a little bit of this and do a little bit of that. So it was like a home brew recipe that sort of. Uh, Got turned into, but I like dry, dry stouts. I don't like sweet stouts. Uh, I have okay. to come clean and admit I am a sucker for the pastry stouts. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not a good look, I know. But <laughs> uh, when it's when it's like really strong, like an, an you know, ten percent, uh, and then when it's like syrupy, you know. Yeah. And then then that I can appreciate that. Because but then you're also done with you know it's like a sort of extreme espresso, you know. Yeah. Then, uh, like the um, the the only pie stuff I found really good. <laughs> ah, it's uh, but it's going out of style. I <laughs> it's not cool to like those anymore. <laughs> no, ah, uh, now you had the the, the the what is it, the evil twin brewery? Yeah, Jesus and even more Jesus. Ah, uh, that that's one. Yeah, uh, web shop, right? No, I uh, mean Monopolet. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, that's the that's the Norwegian equivalent of ah, Sustainable okay. Yet. Ah, all right. But then, uh, okay, but how would you get your beer from uh, Vin Uh you, you know, I guess you had to go there. No, I, uh, I was in Trondheim oh. last summer. <laughs> I had a beer on the shelf there once. Oh. Yes, it was actually the first beer that I brewed. Shit, did, yeah. you, did you get any Norwegian money? I, uh, I got Norwegian money, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best kind of money in Scandinavia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they uh, came and picked up a pallet, so it's also nice, you know, instead of uh, oh, they bought boxes. Pallets? Mm, pallets, cool. pallets instead of uh, bottles, yeah. It was like a, a guest guest beer, you know, they, they have like a guest beers. Oh, that's... There you can do sort of like, you know, promotions like or, you know, like a... Fun ad hoc a, things. Yeah, exactly. Like, a, try this for a change. Um, that would be so nice to switch it up. It's yeah, going to sustain the log. It feels like going to the hospital. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh man! Like that, and like I said, and that uh, you know the stigma that uh, you know it's a walk of shame. You know to go to sustain blog. Uh, yeah, yeah. Know. I'm gonna head there later today. Uh, are you here again? Didn't we see you last week? You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I think the really shameful ones to go to are the ones with the huge parking lot outside because then mm. they know you mean business when you park up front. <laughs> Getting the whole case of Norland's girl today. <laughs> um, whenever uh, at the festival uh, somebody came and uh, say, uh, "Do you have a tour in Stark?" I said, "Sorry, I'm already taken." You know, for, uh, <laughs> uh. Is it Stig Berget who makes the uh, the beer named Earl? I think <laughs> have you seen that one? No. It's I think it's a spoof of uh, you know uh, Coop the uh, uh, grocery store. Yeah. They uh, they used to be called Consum, and they had yeah. their own brand. Uh -huh. And all the products were, regardless what it was, it could be uh, flour, it could be uh, toothpaste, anything. Yeah. It was a white uh, base to it, and there was a blue box uh, with a white font, and it said what the product was. Uh -huh. That was the name of the product. Uh -huh. So if you're buying toothpaste, yeah. it's going to say Tankram. <laughs> and uh, Steve Verit, uh, they're making a lager. Uh, with, with the white base, and they are, it's exactly uh -oh. the same approach. Same style. Yeah, nice. but it's uh, the only difference is that the box is green, ah. and it says Earl. Uh -oh. Love that. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, in the Netherlands, you could buy a beer at the supermarket too, and it was the supermarket brand. And then one side it said beer in Dutch, and the other one beer in English. <clears throat> so it, it was beer beer. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one extra e uh, in Dutch. You have an i in there as well. Uh, ah, yeah. what, what's? Uh, uh, shall we get some beer beer? Yeah. <laughs> beer beer. Oh. Uh, 
Maybe you can have beer, beer in a box. <laughs> a bag in box, beer, beer. Yeah? Ooh. I wonder if that's a thing. Can you have carbonated <laughs> stuff in, in a bag? Uh, no. 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 You, you, the Queen Man would put an end to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. That, that was kind yeah. of the, the most fun part of having a brewery, I think, the, the brewery tours, where people yeah. come and see it and they tweet it like it's some kind of black magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, yeah. yeah. Is there where you pour in the CO2? Mm -hmm. What is coming? Is it, is it like a little, you pour the CO2? <laughs> how does it get into the bear? <laughs> how, how did you package your bear? By hand? Uh, um, um, hand kept. Yeah. At some point, uh, that's also a reason I had to stop my, uh, my elbow. It was just uh, busted. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, I woke up at night because my hand wanted to lift the blanket and then oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how many, uh, it's, you know, 10,000 10, for a 500 liter badge. Yeah. So, pfft, I, I, hundred, hundred, hundreds, thousands, millions, I have no idea how many. That was by far the it. biggest pain point uh, for us as well. Uh, uh, we, uh, the last two years, we uh, had a can man uh, yes. do our cans. And, yeah. uh, because uh, for the first five years, we had uh, the setup was uh, we also bottle conditioned uh, until we got the proper Nilsson fermentation tanks. Uh -huh. uh, so we would uh, get the beer from the fermentation tanks back into the boil kettle, which uh, was needed to be scrubbed down really hard <laughs> before we did that. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, then we primed the beer, and uh, uh, we see how did it go. We pumped it to That's like a the gravity uh, filler. Risk, uh, uh, put uh, it back into your kennel? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it, was, it was nerve wrecking yeah. each time. <laughs> so, um, uh, one guy would be in charge of uh, stocking up the bottles to the gravity filler. Yeah. Uh, one would get them from the pallet of glass bottles. Uh, third one would uh, do the capping uh. and then dip it into water onto a pallet and uh, rinse and repeat for eight hours. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, most of the time I did it all by, uh, by hand. But I, had, I I had these uh, back in back in tank systems, so that was nice. That felt f very uh, clean. So I had my open uh, fermenter pumped to uh, one tank, and then the next day I would pump it, inclusive uh, bottling, you know, the yeah. bottling sugar into uh, the second uh, tank. Oh yeah, that's preferable but, uh, compared to going back to the kettle. Yeah, and then uh, the bag you just toss out. You know, I, I didn't need to clean. Uh, Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. You know the picture NASA took of the black hole? They uh, could just go uh, take a photo of any brewery. <laughs> it's, a, it's a black hole for money. <laughs> uh, uh, at first, you know, when I started, it's like, uh, you know, beer must be liquid gold, you know? Because everybody uh, likes beer, you know? And technically, it cannot be that expensive to make. And it turns out, yeah, beer itself is not so expensive, you know? It's pretty cheap uh, to make, the beer yeah. itself, you know? It's just... Uh, all the rest that uh, is really expensive. Yeah, yeah, and especially if you're going to treat it like plutonium or something, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> like Sweden does. Yeah, yeah. I, I really hope that uh, at least uh, the gorge uh, for shelling uh, will become a real thing. But Jesus. Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, the Swedish expression of a long bank? Uh, no. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long bench, and ah. uh, when you when you pull something in the long bench, it's something that's, that's it could the, it could go really fast, but it's you're deciding that it's not going to do that. So no. It's, <laughs> it's uh, been ongoing for what is it, twenty years? And uh, yeah. th there actually isn't there actually a decision to have gold for shelling at this point, but uh, someone just need to enforce it. Mm. Oh, yeah? I think that's the case. Oh, like wow. the ironite the formalities of it, how it's going to work. Uh, I think that discussion is kind of, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just made up, like ah, yeah. why, why Finland can do it, Norway can do it, well, uh, Norway isn't a part of the EU, but Finland is, uh, <laughs> yeah. What's the, what is the problem here? <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, yeah, well, of course it's money, uh, if I was in, uh, if I was the only one selling uh, beer in uh, Sweden, you know, it's, I'm sure not going to, uh, Give that away, uh, just like that, you know. But, uh, yeah, and the whole folk health and argument is uh, kind of out the window as well, since mm. uh, uh, drinking is down last thirty years, oh, yeah. and since within the, those thirty years, we got uh, uh, open hours on Saturdays, 
uh, we're a part of the, the EG with uh, the import rules. You can import mm -hmm. beer now, and people still drink less. So, yeah. Yeah. so if you're going to follow a trend, that yeah. would mean that uh, extra hours uh, open and sustainable log, it reduces drinking. Uh -huh. So that's, uh, that's a weird flex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did we miss anything? Um, let's see. I mean, uh, we did very little trash talk on system life. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I uh, know. I think maybe the talking point that each step of the process is a lot more costly in Sweden because uh, hmm. of like having employees is ridiculously expensive, for instance. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you can't you can't fire anyone. <laughs> that is also uh, very yes. expensive. Yeah. But yes, the whole salary thing isn't really not that interesting, but it's uh, just getting uh, tax money in your hand is uh, is ridiculously <laughs> expensive. And getting tax money in your hand? And a ta taxed, uh, taxed salary. Like, so if I want 10,000 uh, on a bank account, it's yeah. going to cost the brewery 20,000. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that whole part is uh, probably the <clears throat> one of the biggest points that you can't operate companies in Sweden yeah. on a small scale. No. When when you export, the, the, did you ever export? And I I packed one case of twenty four uh, blueberry stouts in uh, my checked in luggage and mm. sold it to uh, use and tap in London once. <laughs> but that's the export. <laughs> uh, we did some exports, but uh, you have to uh, secure the money that it's worth in taxes. Oh yeah, yeah, we so, did have that thing. Yeah, so as soon as you, if you have a badge ready for to for transport, you have to have money secured on the bank. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you if you have money on the bank, because it needs to be money that you cannot touch that the bank keeps for you. Yeah, <laughs> and you would think I give money to the bank, you know. They would be happy with it. No, but it's really expensive to have it there. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, like, ah, what? I, I love oh. the fact that you're going to get robbed twice because of that system. Because mm -hmm. let's say you have you have a shipment of beer and it gets it get mugged by beer pirates. Or yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, so the beer is gone and also your money is gone yeah. from that account. It's... Uh, it, it's... Uh. Now we're good. Noise. <clears throat> But you know that also in the rest of Europe, if you are a small producer of alcohol, you get a, a discount on your tax. What? Yes. That's... As a small producer, you pay less taxes. Huh. Yeah. And and Sweden could enforce that rule too because you know it's, it's European uh, regulations. How do you say that? European. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. Yeah, isn't that it has become kind of a talking point, right? Because the, the differentiated uh, alcohol tax thing, I think, or maybe it's just me following beer news. Uh, That's yeah. not about it. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't know it, but it was being discussed. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, um, being discussed more now than ever, I'd say. Okay. It's yeah. uh, probably never going to happen, but uh, <laughs> at least people know about it. Uh, but at least the, it's uh, something you can do that's maybe not so shocking to the public, you know? Yeah. Like Gorts for Selling is going to open up a huge uh, discussion. We're regressing now. Just look at Uppsala. We mm -hmm. had, uh, we shut down, uh, Jackdo is out, Up Brewing is out, who else? Ah. Uh, well, yeah. I'm, uh, every week, every week you can read about, uh, you know... Stieg Barrett is shutting down on other breweries. Yeah, yeah. lately. Yeah, no, it's almost uh, and every week uh, somebody is uh, stopping somewhere. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a shame because uh, everybody was very enthusiastic, you know. Everybody, you know, you, you, you don't start a brewery with the idea of making a lot of money. You know, everybody is in it for the product. Everybody is, you know, like a... And then you find out that, yeah, it's just really difficult to uh, make a... Viable business? Yeah, viable, uh, viable, viable. But uh, yeah, I think it's... Uh, I've ne never been a fan of the government in any state or form. And uh, maybe I'm outing myself now, but uh, the deep state is real. Uh, but, well, but, uh, of course. Well, you know. More than ever... I, but it's I, called politics. It's not, not deep state. That's just yeah. politics. You uh -huh. know? Yes, the politics is all about, you know, maintaining your power and, you know, uh, keeping, you, keeping your money. I mean, it's, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's not for the good of the public. Okay, but maybe to uh, to finish up, 
So what do you think I uh, have to change if, you know, really, and I, I'm talking especially about the real small breweries, you know, the ones that make 500 liter, 1000 liter. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's no like quick yeah. fix here. There's, no. there's so much legislation regarding taxes and uh, adding more like special uh, um, exceptions from it would like complicate things mm. further. Mm. The, the fundamental problem is that the this system is just absurd. It's mm. uh, there's too much red tape everywhere, yeah. and they're not just in the beer industry. It's uh, yeah. it's not really uh, Sweden is not uh, a climate for companies. It's no, uh, no. yeah, I, I agree there. Paperwork. Yeah. It, I was, oh man, and that's just one one thing we have to shortly again. Because the stupid thing with Systembolaget is, I, I hate it, not, not just the three month process, but they, they have a web form where you, for each bed ha, have to fill in, you know, all that, that information, how big is your batch and uh, what's the label, and you have to send in the label, of course, and alcohol, you know, the, of course, you know, some statistics, but then they have certain fields, like where is it produced? Well, all the time it's the same because, you know, I'm I, I producing Ginesta, so it's so the month long, and that's a required field. So, you would think as a, you know, web designer, you know, you, you, if there are some fields in it that are mandatory to fill in, yeah. you cannot hit that send button, right? No, you know? exactly. no, no, but it's system block, you can. And then, uh, you know, you, <laughs> so you have your beer ready and then you're waiting for the order and oh, yeah, no, no, sorry. Yeah, you made a mistake. You didn't fill in this uh, mandatory thing in our, our web. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Form, you know? That is quite American, actually. So, like, uh, like American authorities, they know how much you owe in tax, but they're not going to tell you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey, I paid you. You should know how much. Uh, yeah, no, we know, but we want to know if you know. <laughs> uh, do you follow uh, Henrik Jansson, the uh, libertarian no. YouTube guy? No. Uh, he uh, made a great example of how easy it is to start uh, businesses uh, abroad. Yeah. Uh, he was based in the UK for a while. Uh -huh and he was setting up some IT related business. And naturally as a Swede, you get in touch with authorities and tell them, hey, I want to do this kind of business. Where do I sign up? And uh, they ask him, so how much money do you make? Oh, not, nothing yet. Why are you calling us? Uh, get, get back in touch when you make a few 10,000 quid a year. Yeah. Then, then we can talk. Yeah. That, that's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. That will definitely uh, save a lot of uh, paperwork. Saves a lot of energy. Uh, yeah, and also give people the freedom to try out ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, like trying out an idea now. That's, that's a lifelong commitment. Yeah. yeah. My, still feeling the consequences of my <laughs> tryout. Oh, don't, don't mention it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had, I, I had to file for bankruptcy uh, as well. Uh, because uh, there was a contract that we couldn't get out of. Huh. And that, that would have meant... Uh, Another three year and uh, yeah, no, my elbow was done and uh, I, d I felt that I was getting so, um, I was just getting really stressed. Like er in the morning, I already felt rushed. Yeah. You know, even if I actually hadn't any plans for that day, I felt rushed, you know, and I was rushing my kids and, uh, you know, and, uh, I was short if my, my son was taking, uh, you know, 20 minutes to put on his shoes, you know, which he does now. I, I'm, I'm fine with it. He's like, come on, you know, but you know, if that would have happened, if I still had the brewery, you know, I, I would, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I, I recognize that. I so that's not healthy. So it's a, I, I couldn't do it for another. No, no. When I had a full time job and the brewery is, I, uh, I wasn't super pleasant to be around actually. <laughs> oh. So it's, Probably uh, best for <laughs> both of us. Yeah. Life is much lighter now. That's a yeah, now other people can do this. I'm looking <laughs> at you, Arvid. <laughs> oh, he's a... Uh, oh, a temple, Arvid. Ah. He, he actually brews some uh, brass tax beer now. He's got uh, the Conductor IPA, Joe and Me Lager, and uh, one of Cahoots Pale Ale. Okay. Which actually has a weapon on the label. Yeah, Ooh. suck on that. Shit. <laughs> Did I uh, didn't see that? No, no, no right? it's a, it's a, a light blue background oh. with a, a white axe on it. Ooh, daring! Lethal stuff. Yeah, you ne never uh, had to uh, 
change change the label. No, but yeah. now now I guess they're going to have to. <laughs> it's <laughs> out in the wild. <laughs> uh, oh, we got away with that one. Yeah. I, I like the fact that when we do like small shitty things like that, we we feel like we beat the system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put something stupid. Take that label. deep state. <laughs> yeah, and then and that's just to make you feel good because they know that you're doing that. You know, that's I, the that's the bone that they toss you. you know? Yeah, all the Murdochs and Rothschilds are <laughs> <laughs> laughing at us. <laughs> yeah, <so> exactly. <laughs> uh, um, well, well, this was nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go back indoors, yeah. which is not very nice, and ah. have a meeting. <laughs> yes, I have to drive for two hours. Oh, like and subscribe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.